give us a brief overview, if you can, of what we what we've got here, what we're looking at. Are they are they identical for a start? They are, so they're both two 300 litre mixture tanks. So I understand how a normal cylinder works, that you normally have the coil at the bottom because the heat rises and you're gonna transfer the heat from the boiler, but you've got something else going on here and you've got these two ports which are open here. What's going on? So a traditional cylinder heats everything or nothing and the coil will be positioned down the bottom. What Mixergy have done is we're able to heat from the top down, so we're able to volumetrically heat. We've been able to identify, because our tanks have a sensor array that runs the whole length of the tank, and we've been able to identify that on average, people only actually utilize about 50% of their tank volume. So okay. with a normal gas border, you're having to heat everything or nothing. Yeah. Whereas with the Mixergy um, tank, you're able to heat what you need. So if you only need 50%, for instance, you'll only heat 50%. What Javid has done is he's obviously gone from a, he's gone through a decarbonization journey. So he's fitted the Mixergy tanks, still using his gas border. When he has then gone and fitted a low carbon technology like a heat pump, which is done here, yeah. every mixture tank comes with two ports, which is what we call the heat pump ready ports. So in uh, very simple terms, once he took out the gas border and fit the heat pump, he fitted what we call here was the heat pump module kit, which then circulates the tank's contents with the system, uh, making this tank now heat pump ready. I, I don't fully understand, right? So that. So there isn't a coil inside that. When this heat pump is putting this water in there, it's that's a system water. That'd be the same water that's going around the underfloor heating and the and the radiator. Correct. So yeah. a plate heat exchanger, yeah. if you can imagine it, is, is almost two waterways. Yeah. So one waterway yeah. is circling in the tanks of water contents. Okay. And the other waterway will be connected to the um, you know the So the where does the plate heat exchanger bolts on the outside? So here's the plate heat exchanger. Oh so we're already looking at it. Sorry. Yes, yeah, that's I, correct. Okay, twig it now. Okay, so so we have the it. we have the plate heat exchanger. And yeah. two, two connections, so this connection here and this connection here is, is for the tank. Got it. The other two okay. connections are, are connected to the system. And yeah. then we have this pump here, which is obviously to, to, to circulate that tank's contents. And that has now gone from a, a, a traditional cylinder connected to a gas boiler to now being a, a heat pump ready cylinder. When I said at the beginning that you do bespoke models, you can basically configure this for whatever people want. Yeah. Someone can have a tank today, yeah. which could be connected to a boiler, or it could be connected with uh, like an immersion heater. It's very similar to what you see at the bottom of kettle, yeah. and it's, it's also enabled to be um, heat pump ready as well. And this one, they're running solar PV panels, so producing electricity on, off the roof. Yeah. Is this running the low voltage or does it go through the inverter? They have the mixed PV switch. We have two options. So if somebody already has a third party diverter, like a solar iBoost or a My Energy Eddy, uh, for example, mm. um, and they wanted to retain them, they can fit the mixed PV switch. This will essentially communicate with their solar diverter and send any excess solar generation to the immersion heater. All right. The other solution which we have is, is what we call the mixed PV embedded diverter mm. that comes pre-mounted and pre-wired to the tank, um, and it operates in a very similar scenario, but it's able to operate down at, at, at lower um, wattages, so you know, at lower excess energy, which would normally go back to the grid, we're able to, to divert that into the tank. The immersion heater, I can understand actually being at the top, that's fine, a lot of cylinders have got two, one at the bottom, one in the middle, if you like. Yeah. So you've only got to heat up half a cylinder. But this one, where's the sensor, the hot water temperature? Because it will always stratify, won't it? It's always going to have the hottest water. I'm talking about the tap water now, yep. the stuff you use in the shower and so on. It's always going to be hottest at the top of the cylinder. Correct. So where is this sensing the temperature from on the cylinder? Which point? So we have a sensor array that runs the whole length of the tank. Ah. So we're able to understand from 0% right the way through to 100% at what temperature the tank is at we are able to control what is classed as the thermocline. So the thermocline is a natural occurrence in water where it separates hot and cold water. Mm -hmm. So what we are able to do, unlike any other manufacturer on the market, is we are able to keep hot and cold water separated. If that thermocline destabilizes for any reason, the hot and cold water dilute into each other. So we are able to heat from the top down, so we can heat, for instance, 20%, if somebody needed more hot water, we would utilize what we call a top up pump or suck water from the lowest part of the tank ah, through the pump okay, got up, it. Into an, up through an internal pipe into a diffuser. What we then do is we then atomize. So we spray, oh, right. we spray the cold water that we suck from the bottom of the tank into the already body of hot water at the top. The reason why we spray it is because it attains the same surrounding temperature instantaneously as the hot water at the top. If we were to pour the cold water in, it'd be very cool. similar to what we do with a cup of tea, it would just dilute it. So by controlling that thermocline, having the sensor array, being able to utilize the top up pump and the diffuser to, to atomize that water, we're able to push that thermocline down to increase the um, uh, volume of hot water, whatever people may require. I couldn't, I could never get my head around how you managed to do that. Now that, so these things over here, 
Is that what they are? Are they sensors on the thermocline or not? Is that uh, correct? So this this is what we this is what we call the gauge. So there's there's various ways to control the tank. We have the app. You can be used on a, on a desktop or, 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 or a laptop, yeah. or we have what we call the gauge, which is like a quick visual. In reality it should actually be turned the other way around. <laughs> because yeah. obviously we hit yeah, from the top down. The, spot the deliberate, yeah. Uh, however... No, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely need those the other way around. That makes sense now. <laughs> however, yeah. within the UK, a yeah. lot of people said that doesn't make sense. You know, red lights kind of go up, doesn't go down. Oh, okay. So in reality, so what we have here, so each LED represents a 10% volume. Yeah, yeah. So this is telling me on this tank, we have 80% hot water and 20% cold. Yeah, yeah. And on, 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 the, on the other tank, we have 90% hot water and 10% cold. And you can very quickly, you know, if I was to press um, boost, you can now see that it's turned green. So I'm now asking for that extra 10% to be heated. That green light is, is telling me that there's a demand for heat and it's, it's turning the primary heat source on. Um, and we'll turn that off. So, so because this is a bed and breakfast, they are actually heating these cylinders to the full capacity, aren't they really? They are, yes. And I think another, another key thing to understand as well, and this is where sometimes there's a, there is a little bit of confusion. So when you connect us to a immersion heater, mm -hmm. or when you connect us to a gas boiler via the um, coil, we are able to volumetrically heat, so we heat from the top down. When you connect us to a heat pump, we heat the whole tank's contents. Yeah. Okay. So it's a little bit, so, you know, in one breath, we're saying if you only require 50% of your hot water, then it makes sense to only heat 50% of your hot water. Whereas in the next breath, when we're connecting us to a heat pump, we're then saying heat the whole tank's contents. And the reason why is because, you know, there's some, there's essentially some calculations involved in that. So because heat pumps operate much more efficiently than a gas boiler or a um, immersion heater. In, in other words, they're operating at a lower temperature. They're operating so. at lower temperatures. However, because they operate more efficiently, I will utilize less energy, kilowatt hours, heating the full tank's contents with a heat pump than I would do volumetrically heating with a gas boiler or an immersion heater. That's fundamentally down to the fact that the heat source, i.e. the heat pump, which let's, let's say it's 300% efficient, uh, compared to a gas boiler, which may be circa 80% if you're lucky, yeah. or an immersion heater, which is 100%. There's a lot to get my head around there, my friend, but it's so there is. interesting. I mean, uh, are these being used in domestic premises? Is it it's not gonna be your ad average three bedroom semi? Installing one of these, is it? Or? Uh, so, so essentially, wherever you have hot water, Mixergy can offer a, a solution. So, so this is, um, you know, this is obviously a B and B. So this is obviously, you know, fairly high hot water usage. Hence the reason why they've got two, three hundred liter tanks. Yeah. Um, these, you know, these tanks can also be installed in in, in one bed properties, for instance. Okay. Yeah, um, so, so what's the smallest one you do then? So liter wise, the smallest is 120, and we go all oh, the way okay. up to oh, right. 500 so liters. Fairly standard hot water cylinder then. Yes, 120, correct. Yeah. yeah. So some of the key things that we we see is you know we are going on a on an energy transition. Mm -hmm. So there's been lots of smaller properties which have had combination boilers. Yeah, for this various is what reasons. I was wondering. I mean, um, yeah. And as we now go to low carbon technologies like heat pumps yeah. or, or infrared or panel rads, etc., mm -hmm. etc., we are now going full circle. So you know when you was younger, you probably had a cylinder. Mm. Homes are now transitioned and started taking cylinders out to fit combination boilers for safe, uh, space yeah. saving and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're now going full circle. We're now we now need to store hot water again. We're able to prevent the dilution of water when hot water is being used. So essentially, in this scenario here, this tank's 100% heated. Yeah, yeah. When hot water is being used, hot water obviously leaves the tank at the top. Cold water enters. Yeah. And then what generally happens in, in, in most other tanks is that the cold water enters at the bottom and essentially turbulates and starts swirling around and diluting. Yeah. A, a fairly large quantity of what's been um, actually heated. Mm. Whereas with the mixture, that cold water comes in, and very similar to what we do controlling the thermocline, pushing it down, we do a very similar thing with the cold water coming in. So we don't enable it to come in and massively swirl around. It comes in and very slowly starts filling up from the bottom. So we're able to prevent the dilution. So more importantly, you know, you've heated up all this water, you then use a small amount, but generally that small amount then gets fairly, you know, what's, what's remaining in the tank gets fairly um, diluted, whereas we, we prevent that. I think the only other question I've got is about Legionella, because if we're heating with a heat pump and we're not getting the temperatures up to say 60, at least once a week, we've got a chance of Legionella. Is that in the heat pump programming or is it in the Mixergy? So the Mixergy takes, takes control of that. So with a traditional cylinder, I think it's always worthwhile just quickly discussing a traditional cylinder, they would normally have a sensor pro positioned uh, about a quarter away from the tank. Yeah. You will have temperature disparity. So essentially that means the, yeah. you know, the, down the bottom compared to the top, there'll be a, a temperature difference. Yeah. yeah. With the mixergy, if you select say 50 degrees as your temperature, from 1% right the way throughout to 100% will be at 50 degrees. That then brings us onto Legionella pasteurization. So Legionella pasteurization is a relationship between time and temperature. Because a traditional cylinder cannot accurately measure the whole tank's contents, 
they essentially have to go over and above to ensure that the water's safe. Got it. Okay. Whereas with Mixergy, because we know for a fact we've held every litre at 51 degrees, we know for a fact that that water's safe for use. So 51 is okay if it's all 51? Correct, yes. Because I know our cameraman Dylan here, he was saying to me the other week that his water was scalding hot and I went down and looked at his unvented cylinder and of course his uh, thermostat is right down the bottom, yeah. or fairly close to the bottom, and it said 65 or something right. on it. And I said to him, right, if it's 65 at the bottom, it's gonna be a hell of a lot more at the top. So I said, down there, you really need that down about 50, and then you'll get 60, you'll get a more comfortable temperature, because he couldn't wash his hands under it, basically, yeah. it was too hot. So yeah. and, that, and that's one of the potential challenges with a traditional cylinder. You know, yeah. you have no real visibility on what's inside that tank and what's happening. Mm. You do have that temperature disparity. So, like you, you know, said if it's 65 yeah. down there, it's probably nearer the 70, if not, if not higher. Um, yeah. And that's one of the key things with mixture because we have that sensor array. We are able to understand every liter at what temperatures that that's at, and we we're able to make sure that that's safe as well. So, you know, I'm surprised didn't think scored himself if it's is it if it's getting he's as high as that. He's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Got a thick skin. Is his wife and kids he was worried about? Not himself. He's he's, he's selfless. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was, it was a bit fierce anyway. But that's. Probably... I think another key thing that um, some people may not be aware of is, um, are, are you familiar with the term um, demand side response or DSR? I'm going to say no. So last year in the UK, we spent just short of £570 million turning off wind turbines and turning off solar farms because essentially the grid works within a fairly narrow bandwidth. Have you ever driven down the motorway on a, on a, on a fairly windy day and there's been wind turbines not spinning? And, yeah, and potentially absolutely, wanted yeah, everywhere, yeah. And that's because they're actually being paid to turn them off because they're generating too much energy and the grid has to work within a very narrow bandwidth. And essentially, if, you, if you're producing too much energy and you cannot use it or you cannot store it, you have to turn it off. Yeah. This is where Mixly come into a, into, into a world of their own, really, because we offer what we call DSR to the grid. Uh, so fundamentally, when there's an occasion where there's more uh, energy than you know being generated and what's yeah, being yeah, used yeah. our tanks are able to communicate with the grid and able to pulse every single immersion heater throughout the whole country oh. um, if someone opts in you can opt out if you want wow. to but we can op opt in and we're able to help balance that grid so help you know help preventing that um, 570 million pounds yeah. so essentially a mixture tank is a battery it's a thermal battery yeah, to help yeah. balance the grid yeah. and at the moment we still use um, gas uh, about 40 percent on average for our electricity demands and the current aspirations is obviously to decarbonize electricity grid by 2035 so that yeah. means removing yeah. all of that gas yeah. that's going to be replaced with more wind more solar as well as yeah. as, as well i did as actually do a solar. video funnily enough on on that fact that when the, there wasn't demand there for the solar uh, sorry for the wind and and the solar if you like um, that they had to do something, they couldn't store it, yes. and that uh, the converse was true when there wasn't any wind, or when, when, at night time when there's no solar, you needed the gas fired power station to back up yeah. to, to come in and, and make up the surplus. So, never ideal, but obviously, if you can store something, uh, can I just mention? I don't know whether this is you or not, but um, phase change heating, hot water heating, yeah. uh, do you do anything there? Uh, so we don't. We we are purely thermal. So yeah. i.e. water. So it's all water. Um, there are there are um, uh, uh, manufacturers on the market who utilise phase change material, um, yeah. and and they have a place. So for instance, I mentioned some properties like a one bed apartment for Ogden Saints, which yeah. might have a combination border now. You may assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May not physically have the space for a cylinder, even 120 litres cylinder, which is obviously yeah. a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah. So as they need to decarbonise perhaps a tank or a mixture tank may not be suitable because they physically don't have the space. So a phase change uh, option is, is fairly good because you could probably hide underneath the staircase somewhere. Um, so it, it, it kind of works in, in, you know, you essentially have to melt the, the, the phase change material and as the cold water comes in, it obviously retains that heat and then and it sends it out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think the key thing is as well, there's, there's no silver bullet. So no, going no. forward, yeah. as we phase away from gas boilers and, and generally combination boilers, we're going to have so many different archetypes, which may be suitable for this, may not be suitable for that, may be suitable for something else. Yeah, so I yeah. think it's going to be quite giving, quite exciting times up to 2050. It's giving people the options and the choice again, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah. 100%. That's really interesting. Thank you very much You're for welcome. that. And um, you know, I'll look at uh, these in a new light now, unless I understand what's going on. You're welcome.